Even though the GoPro Hero 10 still edges out in front, the DJI Action 2 has been my go-to camera for the past few weeks, just down to pure ease of use. It's super easy to mount and super small enough to carry around with you wherever you go. In this video, I'll go over my favourite settings and will follow up with some sample footage. If you've followed the full review of the Action 2, and I'll leave a link at the end of this video if you haven't, you will know that it's not all plain sailing with DJI's newest modular camera. The module system works great though. The camera is nice and small and mounting is super quick, easy and convenient. But the lens is not replaceable, so care needs to be taken during use, although nothing that a filter or glass screen protector won't solve though, and the main issue that's plagued this camera is overheating. And yes, I'll confirm that, it does run hot, no doubt about it. We need to remember we have a super powerful chipset in a tiny frame here. When shooting 4K at the highest settings, that chipset gets hot, and the small frame cannot dissipate heat fast enough. That's not something that can be fixed with firmware updates. You need to either increase the physical size, reduce the settings to generate less heat in the first instance, or make the coding more efficient, which I would have hoped DJI has done already. This is not an issue faced by just this camera. The Hero 10 has the same overheating issue too. Yes, GoPro released an update, but that's hardly a fix. All that does is remove some features, such as stabilisation and GPS, to reduce the extra heat. Not really a fix for overheating, more a workaround to disable features that aren't really needed when used in a stationary position. The fact of the matter is, these cameras need airflow. They're designed for outdoor use, and when used outdoors, I've experienced no overheating whatsoever. So I guess it comes down to how you intend to use your camera, but for general outdoor use you'll most likely be fine. Anyways, moving on to my preferred settings then, and starting with resolution, I tend to capture in 2.7K most of the time, after which I choose the frame rate that fits the shooting scenario. I've tried 4K and I honestly can't see the benefit. Actually, 2.7K just looks a tad sharper to me, and I can output a 4K timeline in post, and it still looks identical to a native 4K capture. So by using 2.7K, I get pretty much the same quality in a smaller file size, and have access to features such as Horizon Steady 2. Even so, I tend to leave Rocksteady enabled at all times. It works as well as, if not a tad better than GoPro's Hypersmooth, a huge upgrade from the original Osmo Action. Moving on, when it comes to field of view, I like to stick with the standard field of view most of the time. It's narrower, but you get none of that barrel distortion. If I'm in a wider open space, I'll move to the wide setting, and for open landscapes, I'll choose ultra wide. In essence, the larger the shooting space, the higher the field of view I go in order to keep that barrel distortion away as much as I can. When it comes to colour profile, I stick with the normal. Yes, it's a tad oversaturated at times, but I generally like that look, and it means I don't have to bother messing around with colour correction in post. Not one of my strong points, mind, but for general social media, the normal colour profile seems to work pretty well. Finally, when it comes to exposure and white balance, I also generally set these to auto, and let the camera handle these, and it does seem to do a pretty decent job when left on these settings. A quick note on transferring footage. Of course, you have the option of capturing to the camera's built-in memory, of which 22GB is available, or to an external memory card when the module is attached. Both work equally as well as each other, although if capturing to the camera directly, when not using the module attached for instance, you do have the option of transferring all footage across to the memory card. Although note that the file transfer is rather slow, just over 15 minutes to transfer a full 22GB worth of footage for instance. It's much faster to connect the camera directly to a computer, so if we select the file transfer option, your computer will recognise two drives one being the internal camera module memory, and one for the external memory card. Quick and easy. Ok, so moving on to some sample footage, shot at 2.7K 30, wide field of view, normal colour profile, and everything else set to auto, 
the camera does a pretty good job of not letting that direct sunlight blow out the rest of the frame. This is a tough ask for any camera, and the Tiny Action 2 performed rather impressively with a challenging shot like this. Bear in mind this is a shot using just the camera module alone, so just the single front facing microphone and not the additional three in the display module. So we do get some wind noise which is expected, but we still hear the rustling of leaves and other such sounds pretty well at the same time. After a 10 minute capture, battery was down to 73%, again bearing in mind this is just the camera module alone, which I was quite happy with. I'll leave you to watch through the rest of this sample clip. Conditions are a little overcast, although footage is captured at 2.7K and upscaled to 4K before uploading to YouTube, which also applies its own heavy compression too. There's been absolutely no editing at all here, just straight out of the camera as you see it and then upscaled to 4K before YouTube applies its own compression. For such a small unit, it's actually rather impressive, although do feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below.